He didn't take a wave off, sir. He just came straight in. And when he got out, I blew my cool. I called him every name under the sun because he could have wiped out a deck full of refugees. I know. And now I got a hot Marine general on the horn asking me if we always abuse Marine Corps pilots. With all due respect, sir, the chief hasn't been off the flight deck in 30 hours. All the men are dead tired. I'm really sorry, sir. Maybe if I apologize That's to him. That's all right, him. chief. I'll take care of it. Let's get back to work down there. We got a lot more coming in. Yes, sir. The red. Send Major Barrett up here, please. Thank you. On April 30th, 1975, United States involvement in the war in Southeast Asia had just come to an end. Along with dozens of other naval vessels, the carrier Midway was brought offshore to help handle the heavy flow of troops being evacuated from bases throughout South Vietnam. In two days of constant operations, the Midway had become home and refuge to more than 1,500 combat Marines and over 2,000 Vietnamese civilians. To say that it was chaotic aboard the Midway would be to understate the conditions. Dead, tired deck crews handled scared and battle-weary evacuees trying to find them beds, food, and medical care. It was Wednesday, April 30th, 1975, the day Saigon fell. Captain, we're about out of room for helos down there, and I don't know how many more people we can take in. It's awfully crowded. Get me the air boss. The Adola's here. B, can you come down? Right away, Captain. Attention all flight deck personnel. Put those helos out in starboard deltas so we can clear them for landing. One at a time, repeating. All helos in starboard deltas so we can clear them for landing. Attention in the EDM. The flight deck use relief. Anyone from the handler's division, three, four, report to the LSO. Handler's division, three, four. Yeah. Any way we can get uh, any more room down there? Sir, Air Division's been pushing choppers around on the flight deck for the past 24 hours. Those guys are falling asleep on their feet down there. Even if I could make room, I'm not sure I have the manpower. Look at that liner. Out there. Attention all flight deck personnel. Keep the foul line clear. We've got more units approaching on the stern. All personnel for the head to Pity those poor bastards in Saigon. Did you see what the Marines brought on board? No. What? Down there, on deck. It's all over, isn't it? Mayday, mayday. Come, 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 come. Fox drop down to Oscar. Mayday, mayday. You go to the dock. Come, 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 come. Mayday, mayday. Delta Oscar, you go to the dock, Mayday, Mayday, Kunkup, Kunkup. Foxtrot, Delta Oscar, this is Midway. Identify, please. They let you talk only, this is Major Get Bungley. Get somebody who can you translate, I'm going to need him. Uh, uh, see if you can go spot go this guy. The radar will never be able to pick him up with 30 different choppers out there. Keep trying to raise him. Ours are theirs. I would say it's ours. Nothing's come down from the north in the last 48 hours. Kunkup, Kunkup. I think I got him, sir. Just off the port bow, about a mile out or so. Just a little thing. Something else out the window. 
Well, if it's not a bomb, we're not going to worry about it. On the flight deck, this is the captain speaking. We have a Vietnamese aircraft circling us. Dropping something out of the plane. So, keep your heads up and retrieve anything that is the deck. Sorry, I found one who can translate for us. Bring her in. She learned how to speak English at the Tropical Paradise Bar. That's right. Delta, Oscar, stand by one. Say to the microphone, who are you and what do you want in Vietnamese? Ông là ai, ông muốn gì? Ông là ai, ông muốn gì? Đây là thiếu tá bằng ly. Xin được lệnh đáp xuống. Tôi có đi với vợ và các con. Xin được đáp xuống. Đây là thiếu tá bằng ly. Hard to hear. All right, ask him again, please. Ông là ai, ông muốn gì? Ông là ai, ông muốn gì? Đây là thiếu tá bằng ly xin được lệnh đáp xuống. Thuyền, đây là thiếu tá bằng ly xin được lệnh đáp xuống thuyền chúng tôi hết nhiên liệu. Tôi có vợ và các con. I think his name is Major Bung Li and wife can understand more. All right, take her to primary. We'll work the plane from there. You go with them upstairs. Thank you. Thần cấp thần cấp xin được đáp xuống chúng tôi hết nhiên liệu. Tôi có vợ và các con trên máy bay xin được đáp xuống thần cấp thần cấp. What's the range on that thing? About 300 miles, Max. Well, I put us 100 miles offshore. No way he gets back. And I got a hunch he doesn't want to get back. They got it, sir. They got one of those things he dropped. Well, get it up here on the double. Written on a broken piece of board that pilots used to hold their messages were the words, can you move those choppers to the other side? I can land on your deck. We have enough time. Please rescue Major Bong Lee, wife, and five children. How long would it take to move ten choppers? Forever. Even so, sir, we couldn't possibly clear enough space. Give it a shot, Pete. Start moving them. Sir, he's in a panic. It's hard enough to land on a carrier when you know how to do it. He's never done it. Start moving them now. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, how about if we get some of these choppers airborne? We just leave them sit up there until we can get this guy on deck. We don't know where the pilots are. None of them has any fuel. And pre-flight time would be at least 30 minutes. It's cutting it too close. Get me the Admiral on the bridge box. Admiral here. Admiral, this is Captain Chambers. Yes, Larry. I know this isn't your command, Admiral, but I have a Vietnamese major and his family trying to land on the deck. And? Well, the deck is so loaded with helicopters, I don't think I can make room for it. Well, then let him ditch. That's just the problem, sir. He has his wife and five kids aboard that plane. Oh, uh, what choice do you have? Well, I suppose I could dump some of the helicopters over the side. How many helicopters would you be dumping? Well, eight. Nine, sir. Maybe more. Captain, how long have you been in this man's Navy? Twenty-five years, sir. The minute one of those helicopters goes over the edge, you can kiss those twenty-five years goodbye. Besides, what makes you think he knows how to land on a carrier? Primary, get a message to the Major. Tell him to stay calm. Tell him to hang on. Tell him we're trying. Captain Chambers, there's no reason that plane can't ditch. All respect, sir. When that plane hits the water, the Major will get out alive, even after the plane flips over. And it will flip over with those wheels down. I'm not so sure about the mother. But for those five kids, they'll never make it. That's it, Captain. We moved all we can. There's no chance he can land. Drop it. Say again, sir. The seven people on that plane. Seven human lives at risk. But, sir, we'd have to dump at least ten choppers over the side. I'd like to think we valued life at a higher standard. Aye, aye, sir. Now, hear this. 
ordered the dumping of approximately $10 million worth of aircraft that day in the South China Sea in order to help save seven lives. There was no reprimand nor any commendation given for his action. In fact, appropriately perhaps, the only acknowledgement came from the Admiral on board, who when the plane landed safely said on ship's radio, Captain Chambers, good show. the situation in Vietnam was very different. American troops had now withdrawn, and the North Vietnamese were poised to take the South's capital, Saigon. U.S. carriers were now involved in a last-minute evacuation of American civilians and South Vietnamese. On April 29th, Midway's crew spotted a small civilian aircraft approaching. They watched as the plane circled and noticed a small package being thrown onto the carrier's flight deck. It was a pistol wrapped in a note. It read, can you move the helicopters to the other side? I can land on your runway. I can fly for one hour more. Please rescue me. Major Buang, wife and five child. Major Buang Lee was a South Vietnamese Air Force officer. The only way Major Buang can land is if the U.S. Navy helicopters on the overcrowded deck are moved out of the way. The Midway's captain didn't hesitate. He ordered several of his helicopters to be pushed off the flight deck and into the sea. 
about $10 million worth of American air capacity pushed off the deck to, to save this one man and his family. But with the flight deck now cleared, Major Buang still had a problem. His light aircraft was not designed to land on a carrier. It had no tail hook to catch the arresting wire. Plus, there was a strong crosswind. The American onlookers held their breath and watched the Major make a perilous landing. The men of the Midway were so impressed by Major Buang's bravery, they started a fund to help him and his family start a new life in the United States. Pleasure, and please join me in welcoming Mr. Bung Lee. Gentlemen, on April 30th, 1975, when Saigon fell, my life was in danger. I used a small airplane and took off from Gongsheng Island with my wife and my fam with my wife and my five children on board and searching for a safe place. About half an hour flying over the sea, I saw a lot of different helicopters flying in the same direction. It made me think there was something out there they can depend on. So I followed the same direction. After a few minutes later, sure enough, I saw a big aircraft carrier with the landing strip on it and occupied by a lot of helicopters. It made me believe this was where these helicopters escaped to. So I make my decision. If they can land on it, so can I. Yeah. <laughs> 